Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolades at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333, and today we're going to have a few exhibition matches, starting off with a match between Google Frog and Dimefriend on Lonely Oasis. So, I'm back. Hope you guys had a nice Christmas and New Year's and all that, because I was off for Christmas and New Year's, for those of you not aware. And now I'm back. So don't worry, I hadn't quit. I just was on break. And now I'm off break, so let's get going. Google Frog going for the Shieldbot Factory, while... Dimefriend going for gunships on Lonely Oasis is a risky move. Not a bad idea. This is a fairly large map. It's definitely viable to set up the whole thing with Banshees or possibly Rapiers. No, Blastwings. Going for Blastwings first into Banshee. Okay, that makes more sense. So yeah, the standard Banshee rush. Probably going to get three or four Banshees and then go from there because that is what you do. But Banshees are... They are something you need to be building into a small group and then attack and not let your opponent catch any wind of it at all. Because if they do, then you have razors and you have, well in this case you have outlaws, which can't really be dealt with by banshees, so yeah, your opponent ends up countering them. And actually, Dimefroy not really focusing on getting a lot of banshees, I'm not sure what they're planning on doing. They must, okay, that was possibly, I should look at the chat. Sec lag means Dimefroy's not able to actually act in the game. So yeah, Dime Friend setting up their setup, their setup. They had their blast wing revealed though. So Google Frog, aware of this, we should be seeing van er, vandals. Vandals or outlaws, either way. And vandals are more reliable because outlaws will work against banshees. Vandals will just work. So Dime Friend has maybe a minute to be at all effective, and Google Frog's going to start building some razors. Pretty maybe, definitely building the vandals. The vandals will be a problem. The razors are probably not coming yet. But Google Frog would be wise to build them, and they will very shortly. If there's any indication that more air is coming, we'll see razors right afterwards. So basically, there's one shot that Dimefrain has with these Banshees. If that doesn't work, then Dimefrain's going to have a long game ahead of them. Not necessarily going to fail. Like, it may not just cause them to lose the game. They're just going to have a hard time from that point on. They're going to be on the back foot. And against Google Frog, you never want to be on the back foot. Because Google Frog's very good at taking advantage of little mistakes. At any rate, though, managing to deal a bit of damage. That one Vandal actually shouldn't be enough. If it gets focused down, it's a little tricky because Vandals do have a lot of health. But, and also because shields. Giant Front, I think, making the right choice. Getting those Banshees out of there. Let them heal up. They do auto-heal, so get them regenerated. Get them back in the fight. There will be a Razor up. There's got to be a Razor up shortly. There's a bunch of Vandals coming up. There's the Razor. There's always a Razor. Always, always, always. Whenever air comes up, there's a Razor. Because that's the best thing you have. But Dime Friend playing this pretty smart. They're just making sure that they're expanding. They are, however, getting harassed by Google Frog, aware that Dime Friend's gonna be using that Banshee setup as a cover for expansion, and doesn't want to allow it. And this wasp just on the cliff. No, don't go for no, that wasp is it was doing fine. It was avoiding all detection. Actually, it's still okay. Holy crap! Google Frog did not see that. It did not see that at all. They that bandit just We'll get back to it, but at the moment, Dying Friend actually has a chance of setting up. Getting a few Lotuses, a few Metal Extractors, that Wasp will be able to do something. That was a fluke of timing. Assuming it actually does something and doesn't just sit there. I mean, it's gonna just... Uh, okay, I guess it's just going to sit there looking stupid. Well, at any rate, some damage was dealt. Dying Friend managed to get a little bit of economy almost, but... Yeah, not paying as much attention to it, unfortunately, and they kind of need to, given that they are going for very timing-sensitive strategies. I mean, they were about a second away from being detected and getting shot down. And now this wasp at least has the lotuses going off, going for it. It's not great, because the vandals are coming in, and now Google Frog's going to be able to get rid of the lotus, or get rid of the wasp without the lotus being a problem. Okay, never mind, the lotus is a problem. But still, wasp, you're having a hard time. And now the banshees are going to have another hard time, because this racer is already set up. Google Frog's set up for defending against a tiny amount of air coming in. The jump bot switch is not quite done, so once that's once that's finished, I'm expecting we'll see pyros, probably. I mean, Dying Frog needs a mainline army. They are not going to be going for Firewalker or anything fancy. They're going to go for pyros, any artillery type thing. They're going to be doing from the air, because it's easier to set up Blast Wings or Brawlers and use that. Even though, admittedly, Firewalkers are such a good unit, they might just go for them anyway. But that's the problem there. There's the Razor. There's the Razor proving why you always see Razors when air comes up. Because they're awesome. I doubted them before when I was in my younger, more foolish days. Actually, I still kind of doubt them for Banshees. 
Half a dozen Banshees against the Razor is probably going to be a Banshee win. But they're still good. They're still deterrent. And even if it's a Banshee win, it's a bit of a suicide mission. At any rate, the Wasp... Ooh, nice. Very clever. Diamond Front setting up that Caretaker to set up all the construction on top of it. So the Wasp doesn't have to risk itself at all. It can just set up the nanoframes, the Vandal's not going to stop them, and the Caretaker can build up everything. Nicely done, Diamond Take notes, people. This is how you do this sort of really risky building setup. And... What did the Blast Wing just exterminate? Oh, a dirtbag. And a wind generator. And very nearly a Caretaker. <laughs> well, it's something. I'm afraid, what are you planning on using that jump by factory for? Google Frog setting up their standard Thuglaw Ball. Thuglaw Bandit Ball. That's normal. And Dying Friend, proud of you there with their little harassment going on in the south. So Dying Friend, not letting anything go to waste. There's openings. Take them. Kill things. Why not? Good idea. And actually, not much that can be done at the moment. This, these two metal extractors are basically dead. The bandits will be a problem, but that Banshee's going to be able to escape. So, good job. Google Frog losing four metal per second for no cost to Dying Friend. And at the same time, Dime Friend kind of forcing Google Frog to continue to build the expensive races around the- well, 300, okay, not that expensive. But still building races around the map, kind of forcing that defense, keeping Google Frog's expansion a bit slower than it might necessarily be. At the same time, though, Google Frog's army is terrifying, and Dime Friend, they don't have much to deal with it. I mean, they've got a lot of harassment going on, These this Banshee is doing work, but that's about it. I mean, it's doing- it's doing good. It's about to die. But it accomplished a lot in its life. Got rid of five metal extractors. And now Dying Friend needs to turn that into... Turn that metal advantage, or metal parity, really, into actual anything. Like, build another caretaker. Or, I mean, near the jump off factory to actually use this. Or build more energy structures. Or do anything, actually. I mean, at the moment, there's not really a whole lot being built. So I don't know what Dying Friend is focusing on right now. And if we check, they're apparently trying to command a Blastwing. Okay, that's their entire focus right now. Apparently not noticing the fact that they are accessing metal at the moment. And also losing their metal extractors to the southeast, which kind of evens out all that Banshee harassment, unfortunately. And the Caretaker will be able to get some reclaim from that, but it's still an entire expansion that was very cleverly set up, being knocked down with no competition at all. Nothing Dynefrain is doing to stop that. Okay, the Wasp, are you finally going to do something? Yes, finally going to do something. Setting up some caretakers and generators and everything else. I think they might be expecting the other caretaker to help out, but no, that caretaker is dedicated to helping out that jump-off factory, so it's not going to be doing anything. There's... kind of unfortunate, really, that it's not doing anything, because that would be handy, but right now, Dynefrain... Finally using up that metal, but not really with any advantage. And there's the Firewalker. Regardless of the fact that they have the Blast Wings and everything else, they are going to go for the Firewalker, because the Firewalker is awesome. Still, it's like, just, how do you... I don't know, this is a tough situation. Given that that early Banshee harassment didn't work out, trying to rebuild from there, especially if you're not being on the ball at every single moment, it's really difficult. So I don't really, I don't see that being the way to go. I mean, it was it was a good idea. There was a lot of good ideas. It was just a matter of the timing. Especially against Google Frog. Google Frog's, or any strong player, any player that's 2000 LO or so, they're generally going to be so quick about everything that you have to make sure you're not wasting time. If you're wasting any time at all, it's going to be a big mistake they'll take advantage of and will beat you with it. Because, I mean, Google Frog also expanded a fair bit faster despite all the harassment. Whereas Dying Friend only had the one Wasp, and it had their commander expanding a bit, and the Wasp was kind of hiding out and not really expanding that much, and didn't use the metal as they had it, as they got the advantage, as they were harassed, or not the advantage, but the parity, as they were harassing, didn't have the energy, it was small little things, but they matter. Anyway, that map. And I know Dying Friend, if they, when they watch this, they're going to go, you know, I could beat you any day of the week, Shadow Fury. It's like, you know, probably could, but that doesn't make my point any less valid. Anyway. Speaking of Dying Friend, next game is actually going to be Dying Friend and North Chilean G on Comet Catcher Redux. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.